So, first on the left hand side, you can see that ball now yeah. way forward. Okay, so your strike point now is going to be kind of here. Okay, so if you hit the ground properly, the club bounces the ground. You either fat it in the winter, yeah. you're in a bit of ground early, yeah. or you thin the ball because you hit the ground, the club now is working up as you make contact. Or when you thin the ball, you then try and bend your knees to drop into it or get down to the golf ball. You have to compensate. I mean, think of it like if I put the ball over here somewhere, you have to make quite a big adjustment to make contact with that ball over there. Likewise, if it's too far back here, mm. same again. So getting the ball in the right spot makes a massive difference, okay? And what we've got to be confident of doing, we're not trying to keep the arms jerky and rigid and through the ball, just allow that sort of free release of that club, okay? So this one here now, when you're sort of swinging back and through, looked a bit kind of like jabby and stabby, okay, with a golf ball, okay? Yeah. Trying not to flick. Now, what ends up happening is you end up flicking the ball anyway because your arms get stiff and stop because they're so tight trying not to move and not to flick. You just go, yeah. and it looks very unorthodox and a bit tight, okay? On this one, on the right-hand side, we said, okay, you're going to stand to the side of the golf ball, and you're going to make a practice swing now. Club's going to bottom out there, as we can see. So impact, arm on the club are nice in a straight line, okay? And release your arms through. So your hand now finishes past your body. You can flick release all you like on that one there, because the club's yeah, continued on with the arms, so your arc has been this way. If you try and pull the handle through or stop your arms to stop flicking, yeah. the club now is going this too much. Again, very high and very sort of abrupt okay they do two practice swings to the side getting the bounce of that club to hit the ground see those arms sort of swinging through nice and freely you compare that position to yeah, yeah. it's all very stuck and yeah, tucked back in where there. i was at the start yeah the and then so now when we go back to the golf ball here now that same sort of release of the club this one to a lot guys look a bit flicky a bit stabby yeah, at the yeah. end there because you got a bit more tense but at least the impact we allow that club to release through the arms could have kept going a little bit. I think when the ball's at, it's a little bit harder because obviously mm. we're trying to hit it and stuff. Yeah. But that drill we did where we said, okay, just check the ball six foot, eight foot, yeah. ten foot. Yeah. Get yourself swinging that club so you can get, see on your practice and so you're missing the ground. And that's yeah. thinned. Oh, no, that's right. Getting my arm swing now. Yeah. That's still thinning it. We haven't yet. That's better. I want to hear, for me, when you're striking a chip or a pitch, any shot you play, you want to hear that thump. There needs, to, there needs to be that dull thump of the ground where that club's hitting the ball. Rough and fairway, okay? You see a lot of guys go in the rough and the ball's teed up and they sort of do this. They just hit the top of the grass. Well, that's all well and good if the ball's sat up there, but if the ball's nestled down the grass and you at the top of the grass, you're at the top of the ball. That's, and that's kind of the dis disturbing of the turf we're looking for. So that mark here, yep. a disturbance of the turf there, yep. like so. It's not a dig. It's not, as we said at the start of the lesson, I must try and hit down on the ball. And have to down the ball at all. If you set up to it properly with the ball, as we said, level or behind your sternum, not in front of it, you're going to natch. It's a real difference. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Well, if I'm, I mean, again, at the extreme case, if I set up like so, <laughs> yeah. I'd have to move a lot of my knees or chase my knees or yeah. push my arm this or do something extreme to try and reach that golf ball. So when the ball is too far forward or in the wrong spot in any way, if I was too far from it or too far back it or whatever. Any errors at setup create general error impact. Okay, but then we try to cure the symptom with arms, thinning the ball and flicking the ball right. by doing something else. In general, in your case, tensing the arms, mm. which unfortunately reduces all feel you have anyway. You've got no control with the arms at all. You think when you're just doing that move there, how soft is your grip in the arm? There's yeah. no tension in your arms there. No. You're just letting that arm swing back and forth. And if you're dominant right hand, okay, you just swing back and just back and through. There's no hitting that shot at all. It's getting that rhythm in the swing. So you see when you put two hands on there, we're just catching the top of the grass. We haven't really got that yes, sorry, thump of the ground yet. That's the one. But get, let it just fall and drop. Now, now, I'm, now I'm hitting the ground. I'm stopping my arms. <laughs> That's all right. That's it. There you go. But again, just doing it with some rhythm and swing. If we get quick and jerky, what we'll find then, when the rhythm and the tempo gets out of sequence or out of whack, it's very hard to do finesse shots. If you're very jabby and quick with the shots, if you're trying to play a lob shot over this bunker, under pressure, when the tension's going to increase and the rhythm will often get quicker, to play these finesse and delicate shots... My worst shot on Sunday, uh, other than the tee shots on the two par threes, yeah, yeah. was on the 13th, I was just behind the pond on, in two. 
Okay, yeah, great. And I, and I put a picture of Wedge in the punt. Oh, no. And then put it on the green next. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, provisional ball, you can yeah. react within 10 seconds, can't you? That's what we always say. The second one after a duff yeah. will always be a better version. It could be an overreaction. You might spin it or fat it, but you'll get a better yeah. shot. But yeah, and that's just again. That's so frustrating to be to be in that pond in two. Yeah, shots. yeah, yeah. It's very good. And missed it. Yeah, and the thing is, you're there, and, and that I think the knock-on effect of that frustration possibly carries on to 14 and 15 and 16. Yeah, skip 14 or 15. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah, you go. then you go on six. You go on 16, then you're like, oh, here we go, and then yeah. it causes other problems as well. So you, you hit some other bad shots as a result. So these these all these shots, every shot in golf is important okay? I'm not saying yeah. one's more so than other ones okay but the ones that we have least success with the way with the driver the fairway is 30 40 yards wide and as long as it goes over 180 190 which you can do capably okay mm. it kind of does the job mm. but can you hit a golf ball onto a green from 50 yards that's what it comes down to can you hit the ball on the green from 20 yards so what I would suggest in terms of out here sometimes get some balls and just get some cones or put some head covers or whatever around that flag and just see how many balls in a row can you hit inside that circle? I remember Mickelson was saying once, when he goes to tour events, he goes in a bunker, has a 15-yard bunker shot, and he puts a three-foot circle around the hole. And his record of consecutive shots inside three foot is 27. Mm. Now, I reckon most golfers in the world could put 27 balls inside yeah. three foot from 15 yeah. yards. They might hit a bunker shot. Yeah. So if we can get the yeah. ball on a green, Again, we talk about that mini par three scores. Going back to that 13th, you've hit two fabulous shots. Mm. You've then gone one, drop two, three on the green. Then if you hold the putt or two putted or chipped and two putted, it could have been a five or six. So from 80 yards, you've taken six shots to get the one yeah. hole. Well, that's just, I was doing that far too much. Yeah. And, that, and, that, and again, it's, it's an easier way to reduce scores by just saying, OK, right, let's just hit a ball onto a green from 50, 60 yards or 80 yards, 100 yards, rather than and, and the one, hit the ball 10 yards further. The one hole in my mind... That will help with. Yeah. Seven's on the button. Oh, massively. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Green as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I can very rarely put my throat shot on the green. Yeah, exactly. It's a tough shot. So if you can, if you can do that. Exactly. Club motion. Yeah, I think for you it's just about making sure your practice swings have a purpose. You don't just do them for the sake of doing them, and you discipline yourself. Okay, right. I'm going to stand the side of the ball. Okay, and make my practice swing and see where my strike point is. If you sort of stand here and just go and do that, you step the golf ball, <laughs> that's what you're going to get. You're going to repeat the shot or you'll overreact and the knees will start going or the shoulder will start dropping or you'll try and stay down with it longer as you're on one shot and you'll just duff it. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, absolutely.